Okay. Okay, that's unfortunate. Okay, we we can swap with Angela then. Angela, if, if you're ready, maybe you can share your um your screen and then we'll quickly jump to you. Thank you so much, Group C two K two, the K two the drug. Thank you, sir. Okay, hello. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Piri. Uh, good afternoon, Mrs. It's Mirena. It's actually evening. Good evening. <laughs> yeah, it's an evening afternoon though, but I don't know. But oh yeah, yeah. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Mm. Good evening. Okay, so I'm just uh, getting to my. So again, as, as Angela is sharing her presentation, so I'm co-supervising Angela, um, her principal investor, well, the primary supervisor is Mrs. Zulu, Felicia Zulu, um, so, but I'm just, I, I play the role of uh, co-supervisor, uh, in case people are wondering if it matters to some people. Now. And she's second year, so we've been working together from last year, actually beginning before last, towards the end of, is it 20, 2018, I think, Yes, from 2018. Yeah, he was enrolled in, in a course that I was teaching. Okay. Uh, can you see my content? Uh, no, I don't think you've shared your screen yet. Oh, okay. It's me. Sorry, maybe it's me. I don't think you've shared your... Okay, now we can see something. Is it visible now? Um, it is. I don't know about the, the other participants. I can see your presentation. And um, I'm going to time you, although the, the previous presenters went uh, beyond the allocated time, but I'll time you nonetheless. Uh, if you could stick to the prescribed time, that would be really good. The previous group went, uh, went uh, but I think they, they did six minutes and seven seconds. So if you could just stick to the uh, 15 minutes, that would be really good. Is it 15 minutes? 15 minutes, yeah, that would be really good. But yeah. Okay, yes, so uh, my names are Angela Banda Nirenda, um, and my study is an investigation of uh, the workflows that are involved in, a, in the ingestion of uh, electronic thesis and dissertations into the institutional repositories. And this is a case study of the University of Zambia institutional repository. And like uh, Dr. Piri did mention, uh, my, my uh, principal supervisor is uh, Madam uh, Felicia Zulu, and I'm being uh, co-supervised by Dr. Piri. And so uh, the background to this uh, study briefly is that um, we've noticed that um, the ETDs that we have sitting in the institutional repositories are sort of... Uh, take too long to, to be placed into the institutional repository. And so students have access to odd, if you like, odd uh, electronic thesis and dissertations. And uh, this has uh, an effect on the, the research output because then uh, we can have research uh, duplication because people won't know what research has been done. So we, we want to find ways of uh, addressing this problem of uh, the long delay between publication date and uh, date of ingestion of ETDs into the institutional repository. Conceptually, we, we say that um, when a student submits uh, their electronic thesis and dissertation, they are activities that go around, uh, you know, the postgraduate coordinators from various schools. They have certain activities or workflows that they uh, they, they do, and after that, they pass over the, the, the ETDs to uh, DRGS. From DRGS, after they process, they submit to the library, who in turn uh, ingest these uh, ETDs into the institutional repository. So this uh, conceptual framework just gives us uh, in a nutshell, the journey that uh, ETDs take from the time they are submitted to the time they are 
you know, uh, ingested into the institutional repository. So what we want to understand in this study is uh, what are these activities that uh, the various stakeholders uh, do? And is there a way that we could uh, find better ways of uh, handling these uh, workflows? So basically that is what uh, the study is looking at. And maybe just to, to run through the objectives of uh, the study. Um, so the, the, the overall objective of uh, this study is to explore effective workflows that can reduce the turnaround time that electronic thesis and dissertations take to be ingested into the institutional repository from the time they are submitted. And so the specific objectives are to ascertain the turnaround time that is associated with uh, submission and ingestion of uh, ETDs into the institutional repository. So in under objective one, we are basically trying to understand the extent of the problem and by so doing, we will go into the, which we've already started, we go into the institutional repository, we collect the ETDs that are there and see um, the actual problem at, at, at uh, on site. You know, when did this uh, ETD come uh, in our possession and how, when did we submit it or ingest it into the institutional repository? The second objective is to understand the functions and associated workflows that multiple stakeholders involved in the submission and uh, ingestion of ETDs into the institutional repository uh, play. So what are these roles that they play and how can we make these uh, workflows and functions better uh, so that at the end of the day we have these uh, ETDs uh, timely ingested into the institutional repository. And the last uh, objective is uh, that we want to propose uh, workflows that can reduce the turnaround time between the time of, that are they, they are submitted to the time of ingestion. The statement of the problem, like we did say at, uh, at, at, at the beginning, we think that uh, for a university to attain you know, uh, quality in terms of research, they should have uh, good quality uh you know in, in research uh, research resources so this can only be done if uh, people are you know publishing and these uh, materials are made available timely into the institutional repository so uh, that's the problem that we are trying to look at so our our our, our institutional repository as it stands um lacks the the, the recent etds present in there, and this leads to uh, research duplication and low quality of research output. So maybe just to run through, uh, I'll skip quite a number of things. I just want to share um, the progress that we've made, because I think that's uh, from what we were guided, this is what you want to uh, know, Doc, how far have we gone in the research? So, um, we, we are glad to report that this work has been submitted for ethical clearance uh, at DRGS and uh, for us to submit, obviously we needed to get clearance by from our two supervisors. We, we got clearance from our two supervisors and submitted to DRGS for clearance. And so as we await clearance from DRGS, we thought we cannot just sit. We we think there are still other things that we can do that do not uh, um, that are not ethically sensitive. So under objective one, we thought uh, we could still go ahead and look at the turnaround time that is associated with uh, submission and ingestion. So we went into the institutional repository and managed to harvest uh, 3,500 ETDs from the institutional repository. So in harvesting, we harvested and converted the harvested data from XML to Excel. We also cleaned the work and uh, computed the different uh, submission dates and uh, publication. So in short, we computed the turnaround time. But uh, after looking at uh, what we were doing, we discovered that uh, 
our institutional repository actually wrongly captured the dates of um, submission. So we needed to go back and uh, we revisited the dates of um, submission. So they were basically just saying date of submission and date of ingestion was the same date. Basically just a mistake that uh, uh, on the part of our colleagues from the library. So in view of this, we, we are working with uh, transcribed data from the fourth year students. Uh, we, we will acknowledge this work as uh, uh, from the source. We, we are going to acknowledge in our work that we got this uh, data from uh, the fourth year students who transcribed data with the correct dates. So we are working uh, on computing the turnaround time using the correct dates that we are transcribed by the fourth year students. Further, we are also glad to report that we started working on chapter four because we thought uh, this is another area that we could work on. So under chapter four, we are basically discussing the, the steps that we took or the steps that we are taking in uh, chapter one from harvesting data. How are we harvesting data? What tools, what protocols are we using in harvesting this data? How are we converting the data from XML to Excel? How are we filtering the data and so forth? So in um, chapter four, we are discussing all these processes. And also under objective one, the study also want to appreciate the turnaround time as reflected by other institutional repositories. So we, we are also, we, we have identified Find three institutional repositories that we want to work with. Um, and so we want to see how our friends in the developing uh, institutions are doing in terms of the turnaround time. Uh, further, we, we also thought that as we are waiting for our document to be certified by the ethical committee, we, we thought we could start engaging the, the people that we are targeting as our, uh, you know, the people that we are going to collect data from. So we contacted the library and uh, we constituted a team of uh, three members that we intend to engage in a discussion, a focus group discussion. So we, we, we just want to familiarize them to the, to the study, what we are doing. And so we, we are in touch and in discussion with them. So once the ethical clearance comes through, we will go ahead and uh, have either an online or a physical discussion with uh, the library. We have also uh, contacted five postgraduate coordinators from the various schools. Um, these, we, we hope to send them uh, questionnaires through Google survey because uh, if the, the, the COVID-19 situation continues, then we might as well you know, continue with our work. So we hope to send them uh, these question, the questionnaires that we have through Google survey. And um, our target is to reach out to 13 postgraduate coordinators. Uh, the other thing that we have done is to initiate a conversation with uh, the assistant registrar DRGS. So we, we also um, have started the conversation with uh, uh, the, the assistant registrar with the view that uh, we could have audience with her so that we see, you know, the, the type of documents they have and um, the processes they undertake when the ETDs reach them. Yeah, so the under objective three, we are also reviewing uh, ETD submission models from various uh, universities. This will help us to to, to propose a model, a prototype system that we, we would like to propose and will be later tested. And so um, in that space, that's, that's what we are also doing. Um, I think uh, th that's all that we can report in, in view of time. Yeah, thank you so much. All right. Thank you very much. You actually had plenty of time, three more minutes here. And uh, I don't know if in view of time there was. 
uh, I don't think it was necessary to skip the slides, but thank you so much for the for the presentation, Angela, for the progress. Um, I mean, I, I have intimate knowledge of the of the project itself, so it was it's not really for me, but it's meant for you and I, I guess the other colleagues that the other students that I work with. Um, but I don't know if there are any questions here. And as people are thinking about questions, just to mention that uh, what Angela is 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 working towards is uh, is just a small little piece of a bigger puzzle, right? Um, so in the past, we've worked with fourth year students that have, have worked on a similar or related problem, right? And uh, I, I hope the service is available, but if you're curious at your own time, find time and access the, it's, a, it's an archive, it's a departmental archive for the Department of Library Information Science. We use it to archive research output in the, in the department. So it's, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is what Angel is working towards is linked to a number of other projects that other students have worked on. And in fact, uh, if Robert was around, you're probably going to, to be able to piece together these different pieces because Robert happens to be working on some aspects that are related to Angela's, um, Angela's topic, chosen topic. So yeah, I don't know if there are any questions about uh, institutional repository. Um, I, I do have a question. Ask away, yes, thank you. Um, hi, Madam Angela. Hello, Dukowe, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. I wanted to know the 3,500 harvested um, it, um, in the repository, at least the, all of them that are held in the Monza repository. Okay, uh, these are not all of them. Uh, we, we currently do have a challenge with uh, the, the script that I'm using to harvest. So that is a part of the, the, the data, it's not all of them. Okay, and then I don't know if you are able able to mention the other institutions you're working with, just out of interest because we are also trying to come up with a repository at my workplace. Okay, the institutions that we've identified that we would like to review? Yes. Okay, so UCT is one of them. And so uh, the others, not so clear yet because uh, we are still reviewing how how good are they because we can only compare with something that is uh, of a higher standard if we pick something of a lower standard then we we might be shooting in the air so most of those that have uh, been checking i noticed that they also have a challenge of uh, this turnaround time so i do want to okay. speak to only those that are doing fine and uct university of uh, technology in south africa is the only one so far that have set up okay. All right, okay, thank uh, you. UCT is the University of Cape Town. But here's the thing, I, I don't know, Angela, this is important. I don't know if you've uh, picked up on something that I find interesting coming from, from Dokowe. And, and I happen, Dokowe, by the way, in case people are wondering, Dokowe is a um, deputy librarian at uh, Zikach University. Uh, so she's not just a student, but she works. Uh, she has experience with these things. And we've been interacting with uh, Zikas in the sidelines. Um, and more recently, we were invited to attend the colloquium where we shared our experiences at UNSA, right? And I'm trying to find out if the part of your research, your objectives that involve Hello, hello, Lighton, I've lost you. evaluation of the case of well-established workforce in hello hello i lost you oh, okay can you hear me now though yes i can okay so what i was saying is uh while 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 the core's question was more specific in hard trying to find out which 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 are these universities you're saying you're going to be working with um you might want to consider interacting with Zika's university or Zika's. Why? Because they've just recently set up a repository. And so what you could do actually is, is try and see how you can involve them in that last objective of yours, where you're going to evaluate these workflows. Because my understanding was that, uh, or at least the current plan anyway, is that you, you're going to use a, 
Unga, yeah. right? But you could extend it even further and just involve Zika or something, okay. right? Um, you understand yes, what I mean? Yes. No, yeah. Absolutely. Might be interesting, yeah. especially that. And by the way, uh, so something else we've, we've been discussing with uh, Angela, Dokowe, uh, Tadeo, and, and, uh, and Robert, master students, is you know, how we can modify our previous plans so that they fit into this whole COVID-19 pandemic. Because if you look at um, some of Angela's objectives, you notice that uh, the last two actually, the last three or last two, involve or might involve some aspect of high interacting with human beings, right? Because of what's currently going on right now, um, we, we, we've been having discussions on how we can go about modifying these objectives so that maybe you take advantage of platforms like what we are using right now. So if you're saying you're going to have a focus group discussion, why not just do it online? Because people won't, won't I guess they won't, uh, they won't be happy with the fact that you want to go and interact with them face to face. But anyway, um, thanks for that. I don't know if there are any other questions. Yeah, I do. I sent a text on the group. Uh, the thing is, there's no raise hand feature here, so, you know? Aha, right, sorry. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Please, go ahead. Hello? Hello, I can get you. Oh, um, I just have a few questions. It's just, again, it has to do with my background. I don't really have a background in sort of information science or library sciences, um, just pure computer science, I suppose. So the first question I had was, um, you mentioned that there's a difference between publication and the publication date and the ingestion date. Can you just clarify what that means and what that difference is, rather? OK. Thank you for that question. Actually, uh, publication date and ingestion date is one date. So you find that uh, Dublin Core has uh, defined them uh, differently. We have about maybe three or four dates. However, um, publication date and uh, ingestion date is basically the same date. So the date that is different is the uh, submission date. Yeah, okay. the submission date or maybe the accession, uh, the date accession. Thank you. I, I, so I think Zola is trying to find out more on what is, on what these dates are all about. So what is ingestion date and what is submission date and what's the relationship between these two things uh, when tied to what you're doing? I think that's Zola's question. If I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, we we are looking at uh, these dates as a as a core variable because. They are the ones that tells us a story on how long these ETDs take. From the date the student graduates and submits to the school until the date that they are placed into the institutional repository. Remember we said that there are a lot of uh, processes that take place in the background when a student submits this document for it to, for it to be finally put into the institutional repository. There are all these processes that go on that we do want to understand, first of all. Then secondly, we, we have already identified the problem that uh, the, the documents take too long to be placed there. So the, the dates that we have in place, we have, uh, you know, date, uh, the date that the documents are submitted, so date submission, the date of submission according to Dublin Co. The other date is uh, date accession. So these are dates that uh, the technical people in the library are working on these documents to finally publish them. And then we have publication date, which is also synonymous to um, date ingestion, the date of ingestion. OK, OK, thank you. Um, the other question is uh, um, the other question is not really a question, but rather a suggestion. Because okay. currently, you're, you frame the problem as that, uh, saying, I believe, the issue is that it takes too long to actually publish the, the, the dissertations or thesis, right? Now, the problem I, I foresee in this is you are currently assuming that the reason why that happens is due to the workflow. Now, suppose you were to improve the workflow, and at the end, you find that there's no difference in the time it takes. It's still too long. It, because the problem is not, it doesn't have to do with the workflow. It would mean that at the end of the thesis, you haven't actually solved the problem you stated in the beginning. Okay. So you might want to restructure it a bit, just to be clear as to what exactly you're trying to do. 
Okay, Th thank you so much for that observation. Very valid, valid observation actually. Um, so from uh, the preliminary works that we've been doing and uh, data collecting uh, by chatting with uh, the various people, we noticed that actually um, the workflows are the key things that are leading to this delay. Because um, when we look at other institutions that are having self-archiving, for example, when a student graduates, then you just have a person who is just validating your document and ingesting it. You know, it, it's, it's quicker. But what could be killing us could be the workflows. So I'm, I'm quite optimistic that that's where the problem lies uh, on the workflows. But uh, should it turn out then that it's not the workflows like, like you uh, observe? I still think that um, with the suggested uh, prototype, we think the problem of uh, delayed uh, submission of ETDs will still be addressed. So we, we still think we are on course in as far as ad addressing the problem is concerned. Thank you. OK, thanks. Yeah. So just to add on to that, I will. Uh, this is being recorded, so you want to play it back. What Zola is suggesting is that you sort of like try and restructure, right? Restructure the problem statement and the objectives just in the event that this workflow, that just doesn't, the workflows that you're going to propose do not in any way uh, solve the problem, right? That's what he's suggesting. Uh, just something to think about. If you want to play back what you just said at, at a later stage. Uh, right. So something else here, in case people are wondering or are confused here, and I know maybe group C2, K2 have an idea of what's going on because one of the topics that I suggested they look at was this whole notion of ETDMS. But, but uh, Zola, if you go to our particular repository, right, what you will realize is that um, we, we actually are still struggling to ingest things that were submitted in 2018. Now, I know this personally because um, I'm, I'm part of... Um, Part of the so-called investment ranking committee, and uh, well, I've actually been invited to work on some aspects of that. What we've been doing these last couple of months is working on um, a research report for the institution. Uh, and sadly, we were unable to incorporate um, output associated with uh, electronic thesis and dissertations just because the data is not there. Okay, I see. Um, sorry, I just have one last question now for Angela before I forget. Um, can you still hear me? Yes, please, I can. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure if I misunderstood you, but at some point you were referring to the system. So are you saying that if, suppose, for instance, you find that there's a specific issue in within the workflow itself that is causing the problem, say, for instance, it takes too much time to, I don't know, categorize the various theses, right? Are you going to build a t tool then? to order to sort of automate some of these things. Exactly. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yes, so what we are suggesting, apart from uh, just identifying the problem and talking to the various stakeholders, to see the steps that they, the, the processes that they, they do, uh, you know, in as far as processing of uh, these ETDs are concerned. So we also want to propose um, a prototype that would, um, better process the, 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 the time, you know, so that will enable us to do things in, in, in time. So, yes, we are proposing a system. Okay, thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, and just to clarify, Zola, uh, so Angela is a, is a master, she, she's pursuing a master of library information science, right? She's in computer science. And the system she's talking about is, uh, aspects to do with uh, just modifying this space because the owns the institutional repository uses this space. So if she discovers to say some aspect of the current submission workflow need to be modified, her role is simply to, to make alterations to the current workflow so that maybe she incorporates um, stakeholders that are not currently part of that process of ingesting content into the repository. So not really building okay. a system from scratch, but rather just... That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Piri. <laughs> yeah, under normal circumstances, I wouldn't really be, it's, it's, it's bad form to answer on the behalf of students, but I just thought uh, people should, should be given some sort of background information of what's going on behind the scenes. Okay, are there any other uh, questions? 
Hello. Hello, Dr. P. Yes, hi. Hi, how are you? Uh, good, thanks. Uh, go on with your question, Kadeo. Uh, Madam Angel, how are you? I'm okay, Kadeo. How are you? I'm all right. Uh, that was a good presentation. I really enjoyed it. Uh, for me, it's just a, a concern, actually, with the University of Zambia Institutional Repository. I once worked there for two years, where students actually could submit uh, dissertations or thesis, and those thesis actually were being powered. And if you can go to our institutional repository, you'd find that uh, probably maybe we have 4,000, but people have submitted in large numbers, but nothing is happening. So for me, that is a wake up call for the University of Zambia main library actually to work on it. So that many publications can be, can be accessed by the students. So congratulations, Madam Anjia, for that one. Thank you so much, Kadeo. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I guess in the interest of time, uh, that'll be all for Madam Madam Angela. If you want, if you have specific questions, you can reach out to me, and I'll share Madam Angela's uh, contact details so that you can find out more information.